Yeah, so every year we commemorate the September 11th attacks that occurred in 2001 on the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and also uh, the flight that went down in Pennsylvania, four flights total. And everybody's got their own story about this and how it happened and where they were when it happened and, and how it impacted their lives. And certainly some of us were negatively impacted a lot more than others. I happen to be doing a bunch of speaking in that part of my career. I was working as hard as you can work in the speaking business. I was on the public seminar circuit. And that meant I was flying out on Sunday nights to a city, getting up in that city the next morning at 7 a.m. to be in my room, set up the room, teach the class, tear down the room, drive to the next city, wake up at seven o'clock, do it again, five days a week. I would come home on Friday night, often very late, often getting in past midnight, and fly out on Sunday to do it all again the following week, sometimes three weeks a month. It was a very heavy circuit. As I said, you, you couldn't work any harder in the business. And that meant that I was not taking care of myself. I, I was uh, not taking care of my health. I had no social life. I wasn't having much fun. I was just trying to learn about the business. I had my head down and I was doing what I thought I needed to do at the time to get ahead. On the morning of September 11th, it, I remember it was a Tuesday. Uh, there was nothing unusual about the day as I began it. I, I set up my room and we had books to sell and a registration list to go over. I, I was trying to grab a breakfast before I go on stage and we had a pretty good audience that day. And as I was, uh, using the restroom and coming back to my room to begin the class, there were a bunch of people around the television in the lounge. This was unusual because the television in the lounge in those days wasn't on in the morning. And not only was the television on, but there were people clustered around watching it and you could tell something was wrong. And at that point, I believe we had only known that one of the towers was hit um, and there was this thing about, you know, was it an accident, you know, uh, probably an errant pilot, something went terribly wrong and it just happened to hit one of the twin towers of the World Trade Center. Um, and then the second tower was hit just before I went on. And uh, I remember making a very fast phone call to my brother Dave back in Trenton, Michigan. And I, Nobody knew what was happening, and I remember being scared, and, and I remember this specifically because I don't get scared very often. I actually started to cry as I talked to him because I, I all of a sudden I felt very alone. I had great support from the company I was working with. I had a bunch of people in the room with me that day, uh, and I was certainly an experienced traveler at that point. I, I knew all the ropes, but I felt very vulnerable and, and I know I've heard since then that a lot of other people had that same feeling even if they were at work even if, even if they were home with their families they felt afraid and vulnerable. Uh, I didn't know it at the time but that that fear and vulnerability would stay, stay with me for many months after the attack. Well I told my brother Dave I loved him and um, I pulled myself together and I went uh, into my seminar room and we, we very briefly talked about this and we, we all agreed we would monitor the situation. This was uh, before we had instant news. People had cell phones, but we weren't quite as wired as we are now. And somehow, somehow we finished the day. Uh, nobody left the seminar, as I recall. We just, we just hung in there and tried to figure it out. Um, and, uh, and I taught the next day too. And the next day, I didn't cancel any of my days. In fact, I, I remember I had a rental car and uh, I kept the rental car for three weeks because I, I drove home that Friday because I couldn't fly home. You might remember that the FAA grounded thousands of flights within hours and took everybody out of the sky. And uh, there, were, there were no, and to go out the following week to work, there were no rental cars available. I remember speaker buddies of mine that were renting these big box trucks just so they could get home to their families. So I just kept the car <clears throat> and the company that I worked for uh, uh, paid for the car for those three weeks. But one of the things that, that really stuck with me after that episode was 
that I was teaching in Pittsburgh that morning, September 11th, 2001, and I was not far from Shanksville, Pennsylvania, where United Airlines Flight 93 crashed in the field. And we started to learn about these terrorist cells and how they operated. And not only was I not too far from, certainly in no danger, but not too far from where the flight went down, but it came clear that these terrorists were staying in hotels like the one I was staying in. And they were renting cars like the one I had rented. And they were among us. And I remember for, for many weeks after September 11th, we looked at each other differently, all of us, not just people on the road that were traveling, but we, there was a little bit more eye contact, you know, what psychologists call sustained eye contact, you know, uh, I see you, or I recognize you, or hello. You know, there was, there was a more of a friendly greeting than I remember happening in the, in the months and years up to 9-11. I, I think since then we've lost that type of connection for a lot of reasons. I think it was natural that the that 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 connection would ebb sometime after 9/11 and then of course there have been other divisive things that have come up in the world and in the United States that perhaps doesn't have us greeting each other in that way and and having that feeling of connectedness but I just wanted to put my story uh on record because I think about 9-11 just like everybody else does on the on the uh, September 11th every year and it's been hard for me sometimes to think about and, and revisit that place of vulnerability and fear I never want to go there again I want to I want to live in a world where we're we're trusting and yet vigilant and and hopefully most people feel the same way I just wanted to share my story and uh, if it helps anybody else feel better when they're alone or afraid, uh, then, then that makes me very happy.